can I get everyone to do something really quick for me? This is a lot of people, and I, um, you know, we all have different, we come from different cultures, different backgrounds, and we have different ways of saying fuck off to people. And I want to take a photograph of all you guys, like, flipping me off, or like, this, or this, or whatever. Can we do it real quick? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, everybody. Unplanned, unplanned, spontaneous, spontaneous. That's so awesome. <laughs> that was like the most cooperative display of defiance <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, that's going right on Facebook. <clears throat> okay. Um, so yeah, so some people probably know why they're here. Other people just sort of stumbled into the room. But this is going to be super quick because I think um, some of the questions that Virginia has to ask me might be more interesting than the same sort of thing I've said over and over again for the last three years. But um, yeah, I'm one of the guys in the Graffiti Research Lab. Um, and we're actually a division of an organization called the Department of Homeland Graffiti here in the United States. And we cooperate with departments all over the world to sort of maintain and improve graffiti across our planet. So yeah, so I'm not the only person in Graffiti Research Lab. Um, there's actually a lot of us. But my primary partner is this guy named Evan Roth. So we come from two different backgrounds. Um, I used to work for NASA. I worked for the government. And I was an engineer. I wasn't a great one, but I got lucky. I got to work on some really good projects. And he was an architect, but he got disgruntled because he was a cubicle architect designing cubicles, you know, like in a cubicle making cubicles. And so, for real. Um, so he went back to school, and he started playing around with uh, trying to capture graffiti writers' tags. But he saw himself as like an, an analyst of graffiti more so. We met at this place called iBeam, where we got a fellowship. And, we were working in a lab uh, that was created by this guy named Jonah Peretti and another guy named Mike Fruman. And the idea was that you come to this lab, do anything you want, as long as it's in the public domain. So by contract, we weren't allowed to covet, keep secrets, patent, copyright anything we did. So that's probably the primary factor that's you know, really affected this project called Graffiti Research Lab. We've done a bunch of different projects, from LED-based stuff to kind of traditional graph projects that look a little bit like what you'd expect graph to look like, mixed with just a little bit of technology. Um, I got the bomb squad out. Um, sometimes we did big projects with organizations like this one, you know, sort of community outreach. Does anyone, does anyone here not know what a, an LED throw is? Oh, wow. So? OK. Not fans, I guess. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, you take an LED, you take a battery, take a magnet, you wrap it with tape um, in a process that's almost entirely self-explanatory. And then you can toss it on ferrous magnetic structures, which becomes kind of interesting when you have a lot of them. And you go out with a bunch of people and you toss them up on buildings and sort of, it's a mildly interesting visual project. But what's interesting is that the people get involved in it. They've never been involved in a street art project or done anything in public space. They start to take them down and throw them back up and take them home and put them on other things. And then they were so easy to use that people started making them on the internet, making modifications to them. Um, eventually, people who had you know, some vested interest in pumping up the idea started calling it a platform. And now there's throwies of every variation and grade, including Ward Cunningham. Do you guys know Ward Cunningham? He's like a real cool dude who came up with the concept of wiki and extreme programming and things like this. And he actually made one with a little computer in it that blinks Morse code, the, the Wikipedia definition for graffiti. <laughs> so uh, these are cool guys. Um, so yeah, so this project you know, uh, would probably have been the sort of the, the beginning and end of my career, um, if not for the Dutch government, who was lucky enough to come to us and say, we'd like to offer you guys some money to do a project. Um, and you know, they wrote this number down on a piece of paper and pushed it across to me, and it was a really enormous sum. So we sent them this image on my laptop here as a proposal for what we were going to do. Um, so this is sort of a how-to for you guys. If, you can get in touch with the Dutch government. This will get you 30,000 euros. <laughs> <clears throat> well, this one, too. This was another one. But the idea was that we would take a laser and somehow ride on a building. And we weren't clear how that would work, but we were sure it was possible. <clears throat> so somehow we found ourselves standing in the parking lot in Rotterdam before this building with $30,000 worth of responsibility. And we had never tested to see if this would actually work. Um, but our colleague, Theo Watson, who's sort of the British assassin ninja programmer guy who works with us on all our projects, put together a really good software package that allows people to express this and other inane sentiments on buildings of various scale. 
So here's a few images of what this project, the end result, looked like. Basically, the technology is the same as the kind of computer vision system that allows you to capture uh, a Coca-Cola bottle can and stick it in the right place on top of the Coca-Cola bottle. Um, simple computer vision technology that's been around for a long, long time, digital projectors, laser beams, all off-the-shelf kind of consumer products. And we just sort of assembled them in a different way. And then the trick was, it was really hard to use, you know? I don't know how many people have ever written with it, but it's not easy, you know? It's like writing with a pencil that's 100 meters long. But if you give it to a graffiti writer, you know, someone who's done this a thousand times over and over again, their muscle memory allows them to actually write interesting things. So like you and I, we couldn't write this GRL on the bridge. But my friend Mike Baca can. My friend MC Yan can write in Chinese with laser tag. In Chinese. This means destroy this building. And <laughs> you see it all over Beijing. It's a really, really common symbol. And he wrote this on the Hong Kong Cultural Museum. So now I'm working on this thing called Fat Lab. Um, we're taking a little break from the Graffiti Research Lab. And we decided, you know, it's fun to do this stuff in the street, but there's a lot of other places that you can sort of try to stick open source or even find it where it already exists. Um, the concept is sort of that you can make creative technology in the public domain. You can make print drivers, too. Someone has to do it. I mean, you know, some people hearken for a time when we all wrote our own drivers. But we're more interested in sort of trying to find a way to make open source seem cool, like a music video so that people might uh, engage in this practice um, and, and, I don't know, get dates or whatever the kids do these days. So yeah, release early, often, and with rap music. This is our strategy. 